you get those people that, you know, some of your clients, you're being a support worker that uh, can prove to be difficult. And the problem is, is that you've been working with them so long that even though you're fully aware of how they present overall, they can still have the capacity to really make you feel a bit nervous or about what to expect on any given day, uh, which can be extremely frustrating because, <laughs> you know, on some of the themes of my shorts about, you know, compartmentalization of your emotions and being able to, you know, make sure that you're present at any given time during the day, depending on the situation at hand overall. But, you know, on the rare occasion, sometimes it can just hit you so hard that you even lose sight of your own uh, agenda or your own purpose sometimes, which can make things, you know, just a little bit harder on yourself. So what are some ways to change that behaviour or mitigate uh, the chances of that happening on a more consistent occasion. Um, well, having done this support work for about two years now, I think the preparation of it really does come into focus with your day and with your client and what you know, your expectations are, what you can do with them and so on and so forth. And, you know, it's not... A, Sometimes it can be as simple, you know, it can be as simple as any other day with any other job. You know, you'll wake up, you do your thing, and then you finish, and then that's it. It's a, you know, but there are a handful of clients that are like that. They, you understand them. They, you've built really good rapport with them. Their mental health is is they function in a way that they still have their faculties about how they do things overall, and that can really help. Um, but with, no, with those that need constant guidance that are constantly fighting the system or fighting themselves and fighting you over it, that can make it difficult. Um, one client in particular, like he actually saw or found out that he has, he has uh, antisocial personality disorder. So with that and schizophrenia on top of it, you can imagine just how difficult it is. And in, you know, in summary, the antisocial personality disorder makes them a narcissist, angry, frustrated individual that has no self-regard for themselves, uh, the people they're with, they can be quite aggressive to humans and animals. Um, they tend to have no, just no regard for anything other than themselves and what they want to achieve overall. And this, you know, when you look online at different descriptions of that specific, uh, those specific behavior traits, it's 100% accurate with this individual it's just amazing so you got to take credit so how do you how do you function with someone like that like that, that you have you know with work in working with someone that is suffering with something like that I guess in some ways being able to clock on and clock off with that individual does make it a little bit easier because I've now spent, you know, my time with him for the day and what he chooses to do is entirely up to him. I can't help him anymore for that, for the, the time beyond what I've spent with him. <sighs> driving through this fucking area is terrible so yeah how do you yes yeah, so it's understandable to be able to work with someone you're, you're somewhat obligated to tolerate their behavior uh, to a high extent 
but you know it doesn't mean that you're a punching bag as well so you need to identify uh, when certain things are appropriate and when to step away from the conversation overall when to engage in the conversation where appropriate because uh, with this individual in particular being able to negotiate or have them understand your perspective it's consistently rendered mute like you're you're always wrong you are never right so any suggestion you have that you know is based on empirical evidence of just your life lessons and journeys and being able to set up certain things to, to know how they function like i'm talking devices overall or procedures when going to see a doctor to get appointments or referrals you know everything you say that you've done in your life from your history <laughs> is wrong and what they say is right but a lot of the way they choose to do things just doesn't seem to work out difficult to put into perspective and you know for them to even understand overall which makes things very hard And what must be very hard as well is if there are people out there that uh, have family members like this or that suffer from this disease as well. They must be essentially pushing everyone away in their life with regards to how they choose to deal with their problems, not understanding that it's their disorder that is causing them to think and feel the way that they do making seeking treatment for their issues almost an impossibility somewhat and how much of a person should sacrifice their time with these individuals if all it is to do is to just antagonize another person's effort which is essentially what happens these people seem to be more hell-bent on bringing out the anger and aggression in other people to justify their behavior which makes any formal process of negotiation very difficult So to sum it all up, it's more so to do with identifying that they have severe issues that they need to work out and if they're willing to be able, or if they have the capacity, and if they have the capacity to be able to work out their issues then do your best to uh, praise them for that, to, to make them realize that, yeah, you have the capacity to, to help yourself to the best of your ability. Like, take, you know, do, do what's necessary. Do what you have to do. I think a lot of, a lot of people just deny themselves that. They're very self-aware of the implications with the way they treat other people and their expectations of others. And I don't realize that there are processes in place that we all unfortunately have to follow to the point where, you know, we're, we're all in this together and we all need a, a resolution somewhat. But it's really important to protect yourself. And that is by, well, as I said earlier, you got to try and compartmentize yourself emotionally so you can be present, not only for them, but for number one, which is you. Otherwise, you're going to be a mess to the point where you won't be able to help others, and that will, that's something that they will identify. You know, other people will identify over time. Like, if you're not present uh, with these people individually, when you have the opportunity to, to spend time with them to help them achieve their goals because they find things difficult, then they may feel a, a sense of resentment or rejection overall, which can make things very difficult. So. Be present within yourself. 
before you're present with others.